and we're going to actually do a problem and solve for the total uncertainty of the volume of a cylinder calculation. So total uncertainty in volume is going to be equal to the bias in our the bias uncertainty of volume squared plus the precision uncertainty in our volume squared in general. So we're trying to look at the volume of the cylinder. We know volume is a function of two independent variables, r and l, by r squared l. Then you need to look that up. I'm a geometry expert. <laughs> Anyways, so we have an equation that is a function of two independent variables, r and l, which are going to have some uncertainty, r and l, associated with it. So we need to read this problem, figure out what is the uncertainty in r, l, and is there any precision error in r and l as well. So let's read the problem and get started. Two circular cross-sectional area has a nominal length of 50 meters plus or minus 0 0.5 and a radius of 15 meters plus or minus. So this nominal, and it says the question is determine the uncertainty in the volume. This question of, or this word, this nominal value, that is basically saying our average, our L bar, is equal to 50 uh, meters. And the same thing for our radius, our R bar is equal to 15 meters. So whenever you see a nominal value, that's kind of what it's kind of saying here. Um, and basically, we're already given the R bar and L bar. We're also given when it says um, plus or minus. So nominal length plus or minus some certain value here. This is giving us our uncertainty in R and L. So our uncertainty in L is this 0 0.5 meters. Again, we're all in the same units. Let's make sure. And then our uncertainty in R is this 0 0.1 meters. So whenever you're approaching the problem, we need to figure out, OK, is there a precision error, bias error, or both? So we want to be able to identify any precision error. Um, and there's a couple of keys that we're going to listen to. So do we have any information about the number of samples? Do we have a list of measurements? Are we given anything else like the standard deviation? So does it say our standard deviation of R or you know, standard deviation is this? Remember, this plus or minus does not indicate the standard deviation unless it says mean with the standard deviation of plus or minus is this value. So do we have any number of samples? Do we have a list of measurements? Do we have a standard deviation of our sample? No. So the answer is no in this problem. So our precision error component for volume is zero because we, again, we need our, you know, we need this. To calculate precision error, we need T alpha 2 nu S of not X, but R over square root of N. We need this value. We need this right here in order to calculate it. And then obviously that will calculate our degrees of freedom as well. So we will have no precision error contribution. Uh, and we should actually note that when you're reporting your results. Um, so that's kind of a key thing that you have to identify that. So for bias error, we need to know, uh, in, in order to kind of, you know, again, the key, the identifying terms are, for bias error, what tool are we using? So if we're using a ruler with centimeter tick marks, we know that our bias error in that measurement is going to be plus or minus one centimeter. And we're just going to plug in basically one centimeter into here if that was the case. Or it could be from with a micrometer, it could be plus or minus one micrometer. Or with a yardstick, it could be plus or minus one yard. So are we given any information in the tool that we're dealing with? No. Any manufacturer's information? No. Are we really lucky and we're just given the uncertainties? Yes, <laughs> in this problem. Um, so again, we're just given this is the uncertainty plus or minus this. This is the uncertainty plus or minus this. So we're really lucky. So now we just have to calculate the bias error. So our total uncertainty is just going to be this bias error calculation. So we've already written this equation here. So now all we have to do is we know that the bias error is going to be equal to square root chain, uh, partial derivative volume with respect to r times the uncertainty in r squared plus partial derivative volume with respect to l times the uncertainty in l squared. I could do this to partial derivative. I'm a derivative expert <laughs> from problems at one. So 2 pi r l partial derivative of v with respect to l is just going to be pi r squared. You could plug that into um, your equation. We already know uh, uncertainty of r, uncertainty of l. So let's actually let's do the math app. I'm feeling, feeling like doing math today. So my dv is going to be equal to square root of my 2 pi r l times v 
cubed L squared, sorry for this, plus I by R squared times uncertainty, actually this is uncertainty in R, uncertainty squared. So what do we, I could solve this problem now at this point. What is my value of R and L that I plug in? I know this uncertainty in R, I know this uncertainty in L, it's hard to define. But what about my values for R and L? Well, I'm going to use the nominal values, my average values. That's what I'm going to kind of plug in here. So I can just plug in 50 for L, 15 for uh, R, and I can solve this question. Okay. So let's switch to my Mathematica notebook. Uh, let's go to this my volume equation. I can take my derivative if I don't remember. And then I can figure out this, and I can plug in for these values here. So this is my bias uncertainty in meters uh, cubed. So 589, just plugging for the values here. Nothing, you know, nothing really uh, interesting going on. So if I go back down to here, I can plug those values in. I could get this. P and L are equal to zero. So everything is right in the middle. So let's just go back to this. Double check. I did my math correctly. Uh, again, when we calculate V, we're plugging in the nominal values or the mean values for R and L, and we can get this expression right here. So that's my uncertainty in meters cubed. Again, this is zero because there's no precision error set in this measurement. So we are in the correct, uh, yeah, we need to make sure your units are consistent. Uh, always convert to SI units. And you can see in this expression here, let's look at this one above. So look at my uncertainty. So let's look at the units, R's and meters. This is length is in meters, and uncertainty is also in meters. R squared, that's meters squared. Uncertainty in L is meters, meters cubed. Everything's going that squared, that squared. So meters is the six, meters is the six, added, and then divide <laughs> to the one half meters cubed. So we're fine. That is a perfectly um, valid solution. But one of the ways that we're going to look moving forward, look at the problem in this expression here. My precision error in L would be in units of meters squared. My precision error in R would be in units of meters squared. That's an issue, right? Because in here, once I square my volume, this is meters to the sixth. So I can't add those together. So when you have precision error, you're always going to have to convert everything in, uh, into percentages. So one way we could do that is in our BV equation, we could divide out uh, our partial derivatives by volume. And then we can convert everything into percentage once we multiply this by 100. So when we do that, my, let's look at our dvdr, so volume r squared again, i squared l, so dvdr, so this would be, in here our equation would be 2 pi r l divided by volume, so pi r squared l times the uncertainty in r squared, all this plus my pi r squared divided by r squared l times the uncertainty in l. So let's see what happens here. Uh, here, this cancels, this cancels, L cancels, L cancels, R cancels, R cancels. 2 over R times mu of R, a lot nicer to kind of work with. This cancels, this cancels, mu of L over L squared. So if you go down here, we re reproduce these same values. Plug in, and you can find that this is going to be, this BV is going to be, BV divided by V, excuse me. Um, now, this is going to be our unitless fraction. So if I want to multiply it by to a percent, just multiply this value by 100. Um, so let's double check our answer. So this is the kind of the beauty. Um, so we previously, if I do our show you, so I want to divide this by 2. So here's my BV. Cut it out, plugging in for you know the values left over. So this is 0 0.016. Let's double check. 0.016. So that's my unitless BV divided by V, actually. <laughs> um, so what we're left with here, so this is our, again, the unitless fraction. So if I take this, um, let's look at first what is our nominal volume. So if I take volume, I don't know why, so volume, if I plug in for my nominal values, so L goes to 15, L, or excuse me, L goes to 50, R goes to 15, this is my nominal volume, what it should be you know, if there's no uncertainty. So if I take this, so this is, I'm just taking the previous line, 
I take this times my this value here. Or let's actually let's do it like this. A little bit nicer. So if I take this, so I'm going to say nom vol. This is my nominal volume. This is my frac bias. If I take my nominal volume times my bias volume, you know, because again, this is basically BV uh, right here. This is BV over V. If I multiply by volume, I should get this exact same value back, right? Because I'm multiplying volume, which is meters uh, cubed, by this BV over V, so I should get that same result. If I look, exactly the same, right, as the plug and chug method. That's all we're working with here. This is the same value that we saw right here. So again, it's a nice way to double check your answer. So there's two ways you can do it. Uh, the unitless fraction method, which I highly suggest here because it makes your math uh, simpler, easy to plug into your calculator. Um, I would definitely suggest doing this method uh, moving forward in this course. But again, it's a beautiful way to check, you know, solve it both ways in your problem set, double check your answers. If you have time on an exam, do it, and uh, that would be really, really impressive to see. So that's about it, and next time we're going to get into one that's a little bit more material science based, and we are going to look at the uh, precision error and bias error combined, and how do we work with these problems. So um, yeah, that's about it. So we'll uh, do another example next time. I'll see you later. Bye.